Hey there everyone, it's Michael Dougal with eXp Realty. This is your resource for real estate information here in Toronto. We're going to take a deep dive into the numbers so far this year and actually compare them to the price and the strength of the market over the past five years. If you get value from this video, then consider subscribing. If you're an ambitious real estate agent looking to connect for opportunity, then do contact me. My contact information is in the description box below. And let's jump into this first chart over here, which shows the uh, numbers of sales, active listings, our months of inventory, our average price, and our days on market for the first five months of the year. So we've got January all through to May. Um, looking at the number of sales first, as expected, there weren't many sales in January, only about 7,000. It increased in February to 11,000. In March, 15,652. April, a slight decrease. This may have occurred since the new lockdown. The most recent lockdown came into effect is usually there are more sales in April than March, but not this year. And then in May, there were um, 11,951 sales. And then looking at the number of active listings, that trended upwards as the sales did. So there were about 7,300 active listings in January, 8,700 in February. Then it really bumped up to 10,603 in March. In April, there was 11,668 active listings. And May, we are at a all-time high of 12,253 homes on the market, which means that buyers simply have more homes to choose from, which is great. Then looking at the months of inventory, which uh, the lower this number is, the better it is for sellers, and the higher this number is, the better it is for buyers. It was 1.1 in January, 0.8 in February, March, 0.7. So this suggests that the ideal time to sell your home was back in March when the months of inventory was at its lowest point. As you can see there with March, the days on market was very low, only 10 days in April. Then the months of inventory did increase to 0.9 and May we had there are months of inventory at 1.03. So what this tells us is that as new listings were coming on the market, the sales were not increasing at the same pace. So I'll put it this way, before it was like if 10 listings were to come on the market, all 10 of them would sell. Whereas now it's like if 10 listings come on the market, maybe eight or nine of them would sell in the first couple weeks anyway. And now taking a look at the average price, this is the most common question that a great agents like myself are used to hearing from the public. What are the changes with our average price? If you haven't yet subscribed, do consider subscribing to the channel as I post updates to the average price weekly. Over here, we can see the average price was $967,000 in January. And then in February, for the first time in history, Toronto's average price did exceed $1 million. In February, it was $1,045,000. In March, the average price was $1,097,000. In April, $1,090,000. And in May, take a look at that. The average price was $1,108,000 looking at the days on market, and this is a measure of how long a property takes to sell from the first day that it comes on the market. In January, the number was 24 days. In February, 14 days. For the months of March and April, our average days on market was only 10 days. And then in May, the average home was selling in only 11 days, which suggests that it's a great time to sell your home still. Uh, prices are high, as you can see. The days on market is fairly low. So what a seller can expect in today's marketplace is provided that they price their property right, they have a great agent. You're looking at selling the home with very few showings and likely selling above your asking price. This next chart here is our five-year historical average price. So the chart represents the average price during May of that specific year. So May 2017 through to May 2021. So in May 2017, the average price was $863,000. In 2018, it did drop, although not too significantly. It was only $809,000. In the month of May 2019, the average price was $838,000. In 2020, so last year, the month of May, our average price was $863,000. And then take a look at this. Our average price then in May 2021 was $1,108,000. And that, of course, is a huge difference. Let's take a look at the percentage change. And it was... Prices are up by 28% since the past year. So yes, we are aware that the average price is up, but just... What kind of properties are experiencing the most price growth? Is it detached homes? Is it condos? That's what we'll take a look in this chart here. It's a representation of different home styles and how much appreciation they've experienced. Looking at the detached homes first, in May 2020, our average detached home was selling for $1,033,000, whereas in May 2021, 
The average detached home was selling for $1,415,000, which is a 37% increase. With semi-detached homes, they were selling for $867,000 in May 2020. In May 2021, they as well exceeded a million dollars, selling at an average of $1,064,000, which is a 22% increase. Looking at townhouses now, the average townhome was selling for $686,000 in May 2020. But in May 2021, uh, prices are up quite significantly. The average townhome is selling for $866,000, which is a 26% increase over the past 12 months. And here's the biggest surprise is that even the condo market has finally experienced some appreciation over the past 12 months. We can see the average condo was selling for $625,000 in March 2020. But in March 2021, the average condo was selling at $682,000, which is a 9% increase. So what this tells us is that it's safe to say that no matter what kind of property you have, and which area you're in, your property has likely significantly increased in value over the past 12 months. This chart over here shows the year over year percent change. So uh, detached homes specifically in the 905 have experienced the most appreciation. They've increased by 41.3%. And looking at the condo market, condos in Toronto, they've experienced the least amount of appreciation only appreciating by 6.3%. But take a look at the condos in the 905, the greater areas, because they've increased by 21.4%. So maybe once these lockdown restrictions are lifted, we could see an increase of price with the downtown condo market. So hopefully you got value from this video. If you did, then consider subscribing. If you're an ambitious real estate agent looking to connect for opportunity, then do contact me. My contact information is in the description box below. And if you are a buyer or a seller looking for a great agent, then do as well contact me. My customers get excellent service and I will look forward to seeing you all next time.